Hi, um, I want to make a little bit of a different video today. I'm going to share with you a fun storytelling toy uh, called the Storymatic. And I want to uh, talk to you about how this is actually um, also kind of a fun and really effective marketing tool. So a few weeks back, I actually wrote an email and the subject line and the subject of the email was a devastating secret and a deadline. And in it, I basically told a uh, a devastating secret towards my own personal success and uh, tied it to a deadline and um, connected the two. And through that, I told a story that became a really effective email marketing message. Um, and what I didn't say at the time was that uh, those actually came out of uh, the Storymatic, which is it's actually, uh, it's built for writers. It's built for like if you're a fiction writer or something um, in order to help you come up with story ideas and to practice your storytelling muscles. And the way that it's supposed to work here is um, there's two types of cards. On one side, you have the gold cards. And on the other side, you have these, uh, they're called copper cards. And the gold cards are character cards. They're supposed to help you define a character. And the um, and the the copper cards are conflict cards, um, and and so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to draw from the gold cards to come up with a character, and you draw from the copper cards to come up with a conflict, and um, and that forms the foundation for your story, um, and so I thought I might play around a little bit with this. Now, there's specific practices, exercises, whatever that. Um, that are in the instructions for the Storymatic. And, um, and, and I'm not actually recommending that you follow that necessarily for marketing because our job here is not to tell a really creative story. Our job is to tell a good marketing story. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a bunch of gold cards. These are the character cards, remember. Um, and I am going to just kind of flip through them and find one that, that I feel like causes, that is a, a great inspiration. And so I found um, this one, person who is lost. And we might uh, we might go to one more. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go. Let's go with lottery winner. Uh -huh. We'll see what we can come up with here. Um, and for conflict, we're going to, so we have person who is lost and lottery winner. And for conflict, uh, let's see. So I'll read some of these to you, like wrong number, doctor's note, flat tire, box of hair, last night in old home. I'm gonna go with that and um, I'm going to box of postcards, first day of marriage, last rehearsal, box of kittens, first night alone. Um, huh. Reckless enthusiasm. We'll go with that. Okay. So I um, use that to just on the fly, I'm coming up with, um, with stories that might be relevant to marketing. So one of the things that I sell is like copywriting, um, like copywriting career training stuff, right? Um, and and so I, I'm gonna try and tell a story, a uh, person who is lost, and this is gonna be me, and lottery winner is gonna be where my character is gonna go to by the end. Um, and let's see, last night in old home and reckless enthusiasm. Um, so this, for me, it's actually stimulating a story that, that is familiar, which is great for marketing because most often you're gonna be telling a true story or um, you're gonna be retelling some some true story out of, out of life or out of your life or out of a client's life or whatever. Um, so um, in, in 2009, uh, I had actually been working this marketing job for a while um, and I felt like I was, you know, I was really learning the ropes of marketing, but I also realized that I was kind of in a situation where I was lost because I had discovered direct response marketing and copywriting in like 
2005, early 2005, and I, I really quickly got really an incredible job uh, running marketing for an IT training company. Uh, but the problem was it was it was too comfortable. And um, comfort often becomes the enemy of progress because the more comfortable that I was in that job, the less motivated I was to pursue my, my ultimate goal, which was to go out on my own as like a freelance uh, copywriter and, and marketing consultant and work with different businesses to help them grow. And so I was feeling kind of lost because I was I was in this job that was comfortable and that paid well and my, my bills were covered and I had benefits and all this stuff and it was great. Um, and and yet at the same time, I knew that this wasn't where I was supposed to be. Um, but actually there was a, there was this 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 moment um, coming up in my life where I knew that uh, my wife's school was finishing and so we were going to have to move across the country again. And so I was going to move out of the city where this job was. And so I, I knew that we had this last night in our old home coming up um, and it was like a year away by like mid 2009. It was, it was like a year away and I had to do something and I was going to lose this job and I was, I was going to have to, to either get a new job in this small town of Ames, Iowa that we were moving to that I didn't know anybody. And, and like, I didn't feel like there was a lot of opportunity for me there. Um, or I was going to have to finally make it on my own as a, as a freelance copywriter. And, and so, you know, I, I considered my options. I had been doing some jobs on the side up until that point. I, I had some opportunities, but I also knew that there was um, a, a conference coming up that I could go to where there were a lot of marketers in my industry um, and where I could also learn a lot um, and, and, and where I could, I could pursue this, um, I could, I could pursue the career that I'd wanted since 2005, but really hadn't taken steps toward because I was so comfortable in, in the job that I had. But the thing was like, I'd been to a lot of conferences with my, uh, on my employer's dime, but because this was about launching my own business and my own career, like I wasn't gonna, I was, I was gonna have to invest, uh, in it myself, which was the biggest biggest investment I had ever made. And this was like on the tail end of the 2008 financial crisis and all of that stuff. And, and, um, there was uncertainty and we had, we had a new baby in the house and we were going to be moving across the country and we we're going to have to sell our house. And like the, 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 the economy was already down and, and, um, and all of this stuff seemed to be working against me. And the idea of investing a couple thousand dollars at that moment to, to go out and launch my, my freelance copywriting business felt like reckless enthusiasm. Like it, it felt like, okay, I had this dream and I wanted to go for it. Uh, but, but was I being irresponsible by wanting to quit my job when I had the mortgage and this house and, and like the questionable housing market and, and a new kid at home and we we're going to lose our insurance and like all of this stuff. Was it just reckless enthusiasm? But I decided to do it anyway. Like I, 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 I knew that if I was, even if I was feeling lost, I had to take some kind of action to find myself, to find my opportunity, to find my next step, to, to find what I was going to do. Uh, and I had to do it before that last night in our old house in, in Oregon before we, we hopped in the moving truck and went. And so um, towards the end of 2009, I invested in myself and I went to this conference um, and, and, you know, I actually ended up connecting with a bunch of clients there and I ended up getting some very valuable resources there, like the Clayton Makepeace copywriting outline that, that would go on to actually be the foundation of the sales letters that I would write that would generate millions of dollars for clients. And, um, and, and I felt like, you know, it had felt like reckless enthusiasm, but by the time I was leaving, I felt like a lottery winner. Like I felt like. I had had just won the jackpot because where I was feeling so lost before knowing that I wanted to be here, but I was here in this comfortable place. And, um, and this deadline of like moving out of our old house was, was coming up. Um, I felt like suddenly I had exactly what I needed. I had the resources, I had the knowledge, I had, I had um, motivation, I had everything that I needed to finally go out on my own as a, as a, uh, as a 
direct response copywriter and consultant and start working with clients. And so actually after I got home, all the gears started turning and, 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 um, and all of the things that I needed to do in order to successfully launch my business, uh, I did them. And so just a couple months later, I, I actually quit my job, that comfortable job with uh, a really good pay and a, a fun office environment and free sushi on Tuesdays and, and healthcare benefits and all of that stuff. I quit my job and it was a few months even before we were going to be spending the last night in, in our old home. Uh, but I quit my job in time to set myself up for that transition so that we could easily move our young family to Ames, Iowa. And that was at the very beginning of 2010. And I've really, I've never looked back. Like I've continued to grow from that foundation. And now I, now I teach other people how to do that. I teach them the skills that they need to, to, to build their businesses and to write more effective marketing copy and to implement more effective marketing strategies and all of this stuff. And it all goes back to that moment where I felt like a lost person. Uh, not knowing what I was going to do before the last night in our old home. And that decision that I made with, you know, maybe it felt like reckless enthusiasm at the time um, to, to go out and to invest in myself and, and learn what I needed to learn to move forward. Um, and then that feeling that I came home with of being a lottery winner and how that changed my life uh, because I did those things. Um, and, and, and like, okay, so... Zooming out of the story now, I just drew these cards out. I, I didn't quite draw them at random like the like the the storymatic encourages you to do, but I just went through lottery winner, person who was lost, last night in old home, reckless enthusiasm, and I wove it into the story that I could use to maybe pull you to to checking out my BTMS Insiders, uh, Breakthrough Marketing Secrets Insiders membership. Uh, where you can learn so much of what I've learned and applied in my career. And I did it through playing with this toy, the Storymatic, um, and wrapping it into a marketing story. Uh, now, there is actually more to story selling than just having a good story. In fact, in my Story Selling Masterclass, which is part of the BTMS Insiders membership, I actually teach that there's three pillars to highly effective story selling. And, and one is, is telling a, a compelling story. And actually I teach very specific templates you can use to, to uh, build effective selling stories. I identified over a dozen specific selling story templates uh, that are used over and over again in marketing and selling and, and advertising uh, to effectively set up the sale, to move the sale forward. But I also teach character and how uh, you can build a compelling character through story and how thinking about character makes your story better. It connects you with your prospect better. And it really like it, it brings your story telling and story selling to another level by nailing your character. And I teach about that. And then also there's the selling component because um, as I made the point early on, this is a storytelling tool. This is not necessarily a story selling tool. And while you can use it to create selling stories, while you can use it for story selling, like I did with the, the email, a devastating secret and a deadline, there you still have to understand that in story selling, in marketing storytelling and in, in advertising storytelling and in sales storytelling and persuasive storytelling, your job is not just to entertain, but also to motivate someone to take action. And so I teach that as well in the Story Selling Masterclass. Um, and so I'll include a link in the description with this video, um, both to this, because this is a fun toy and it's not very expensive and it's a, and, um, it's a great way to like practice your story telling and I, I even played it with my kids and things like that uh, but also uh, I'll include the link to the story selling masterclass and to BTMS insiders where you can check out um, more training from me including how to use stories to sell and the three pillars of story selling story character and selling um, and if you like this video, if you thought this was fun, you can click the like button, you can comment like any any takeaways that you got any any ways that you might use this. 
or any questions that you have, share it with other people who you might who might find it valuable, who you think might find it valuable. You can tag them in the comments or share it directly or whatever. Um, and subscribe. If if you are involved in marketing, copywriting, business building, selling, um, story selling, uh, if you're involved in any of that, I. I create new content videos uh, and articles every day. Some of those are released here and you can click the subscribe button here. Some of them are released through BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. If you sign up at BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com, you'll get emails every day uh, with Monday through Friday with more valuable content like this from me. Um, my name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I hope you've enjoyed this this different and kind of fun uh, issue, this different and kind of un fun video. Um, I look forward to seeing you again in our next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.